Ireland is really focused on developing our uh, client franchise uh, in terms of the financial markets or global market space uh, across Africa outside of SA. And I'm also very heavily involved in our general client agenda, agenda as corporate and investment banking. So as Barclays Africa, we're present in 12 countries across Africa. We are what I like to call systemic in our markets. For example, in Egypt, we've been there for 150 years. In Kenya, we've been there, I think, around 100 years. Ghana, we've been there for a long time. Sure. So Barclays is very much a household brand in many of our markets. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And you've had the sustainability. I mean, ultimately, that's really what investors are looking for right now. I mean, it's understanding the name, understanding the brand. You've got that brand value. Um, there's been a lot of developments. You know, we've seen all the issues around Europe, the issues in the UK with regards to fixings and fines, etc. But in the African market, it looks to me as though because we're starting um, a new frontier market, the lessons that have been learned from those jurisdictions, we can now implement in Africa with a much better standing because you've got this youth that's coming through. You've got this vigor and this energy. Are you feeling the same thing when you're dealing with your counterparts in the, you know, the other 12 jurisdictions that you trade in? Definitely. I mean, as you said, Africa is a frontier market, but that doesn't mean that it's the Wild West. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we have a lot of talented people that are committed to growing financial markets across the continent. Uh, as has been mentioned in this conference a lot, you know, Africa is a very youthful population. So I think the energy and the drive behind doing it is really significant. Yes, the markets are not deep, they're not liquid yet. I mean, it depends where you are in the continent, but even a place like Nigeria, you know, with its really large um, economy, uh, the financial market is relatively underdeveloped. So we see our role, you know, as a big international financial institution as actually helping develop uh, the depth, the liquidity, um, but also, as you correctly mentioned, just the international standards of th that we all want our markets to, uh, to operate in. And the reception is very good. We work very well with local clients, local regulators, mm -hmm. and uh, the journey is extremely exciting. And one of the things that's interesting, I mean, you can tell us this from the Barclays perspective, but, you know, often you see your counterpart coming in from the US or from the UK. It's plug and play. You know, we assume that the infrastructure is in place, we assume that everybody has the knowledge, um, and that is not the case in Africa. So you've got to be robust. Barclays has people on the ground who are legitimate domestic individuals that understand the culture and understand how to do business with the people that really need that personal interaction. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, in terms of the investment in the people and the places that you've actually set up bricks and mortar, it's not just a suitcase banking scenario, it's mm -hmm. bricks and mortar. Has this stood you in good stead? Do you think it's a great strategy? Definitely. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our brand is probably our biggest asset across mm. the continent. So a lot of the work we're doing now in rolling out our corporate and investment banking is really leveraging on that brand, leveraging on the relationships that our people have built on the ground mm. over many, many years. And also, as you correctly mentioned, not trying to plug and play. So mm. a good example of this for us is the rollout of, of Box, which is our online trading system. Yes. Now, Box is well known across the, the world as Barclays online trading system but the reality is that we took that system and developed it for local markets and not just one market pan africa but 12 different markets with mm. different requirements in terms of you know internet capability and bandwidth etc so we are now at the end of rolling it out across all our countries and it's proven to be a real success for us and the yeah. success is because you're robust enough to pull it off so yeah. you know i think that that is what holds the brand strong because you've got the backup you've got the institutions overseas that are you know bringing in cash but now that that's stopped the african market is starting to rejuvenate so that's very very encouraging for investors. However, let's talk about um, the Barclays strategy with regards to the investor base that you've got uh, offshore. So there is a strong brand, whether you're in Europe, whether you're in the US, uh, whether you're in the UK, uh, even in Asia and regions. If we look at that and the investors that are looking at Africa, so how much knowledge is then being passed back into those um, uh, you know, various uh, institutions to say, come and invest in Africa, this is what we're doing, S use our brand and, and, and make some money. What does that look like for Barclays? Mm. It's part of what I call demystifying Africa, mm. right? And I don't think we can do enough of this because um, at being a frontier market, it means it also comes with certain risks sure. and it's not as if it's only one type of risk because part of you know part and parcel of a frontier market is that you have financial markets risk you've got regulatory risk 
uh, you've got political risk. Yeah. And I think one of the things that's really uh, held it together uh, for the past, um, you know, in terms of the investment that we're seeing rolling into Africa, has been that there's been relative stability over a period of 10 or 20 years mm. or, or longer in some of our countries. So our role is to keep passing on that message and to keep connecting the dots in terms of international investors, international corporates, um, and and then local Africa clients. And uh, as Barclays, obviously, with our global footprint, we're well positioned to do that. But in this, at the same time, we don't want to be seen as just an international bank playing on the continent, which is why it's so important to us that we've actually headquartered in Africa and, and with a very significant presence out of South Africa, which is something that we can actually leverage yes. uh, by understanding um, you know, local market environments, local clients, and really being a, a, an Africa-centered organization with global support.